First Kings chapter 18, verse 25. We've had an interesting chapter. We've seen the tribulation period. We've seen the Antichrist in Ahab. We've seen Elijah in the tribulation period itself. In verse 25, and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal. Now he's come up with an invitation. He said, he last said, listen, there's two opinions. There's God and there's Baal. We got to find out who's, who's who, who's which. And the people left off speechless. He said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullet for yourself. There's two bullets been put up for, for this challenge. One for Baal, one for God. And dress it first. He's going to let them go first. Nice guy. For ye are many. Uh, 450 at least. And call on the name of your gods. Well, look at that. It's Baal, but it's gods. Balaam, we saw earlier. So it's not just one deity they're worshiping. They're worshiping a whole host of gods. Asterisk. All the stars. And don't forget, there's two religions also. There's Jeroboam's golden calves. And there's Baal, which Jezebel brought from hometown. But put no fire under it. No spark or no coal. And I said before about this, is the magical trick here to deceive which magic is, is they would sneak a coal or a little spark and bury everything on top of it. And they would do their incantations, whatever, their, their hocus pocus. Their magic word and you know, kind of like blow on it as they're talking. I've heard eventually that coal would spark a fire and say, Look, there it is. See how great that is? And that's what magic is, it's deceiving. That's why it's not to be for Christians. All those illusion tricks today, that's what it's called, the illusion. And you can find out most magic tricks if you study looking books, you can find out that there is a trick to it. That's why they call it a magic trick. Tricks have nothing to do with kids. They say tricks are for rabbits. Well, what does a rabbit associate himself with? Easter with a star and magic. You think I was going to say that? And they took the bullock, which was given them. Now, it's funny. He says, I don't know what the implication here, but in verse 25, he says, choose you out one. And it says, given them. I don't know who chose it, but I would assume that somebody in charge chose it and given it to the priest of Baal. And they dressed it and called on the name of Baal. That's the foreign god. That's Satan. From morning unto noon. Isn't that interesting? 12 o'clock. High sun time. Saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. Nor answer. Let's run to Psalms 15, verse 2. Psalms 15, verse 2. Did I say Psalms 15, verse 2? I must have wrote down the Psalms 115, verse 2. Excuse me. 115, verse 2. 115, verse 2. Now, Baal was an image, an idol. He wasn't a god. In Psalms 115, verse 2, Wherefore should a heathen say, Where is now their god? Sound familiar? But our god is in heaven, in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he has pleased. The idols are silver and gold, the golden calves, the work of men's hands, Jeroboam. They have mouths, but they speak not. Come on, Baal, speak to us. He can. And if you go on the internet search and do B-A-A-L, you'll see all kinds of statues and all kinds of images of Baal. He can't speak. Like if you go to a, a, a good art exhibit and they got pictures of men and women and children, they speak to me. He can't. Eyes they have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. And that's what these prophets are built. Baal, hear us. Can't hear you. I'm deaf. Dumb. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. 
feet they have feet have they but they walk not neither speak they through their throats Baal's not going to answer them they that make them are like unto them so is everyone that trusts in them without life that's the only way you can get that description it's a piece of metal piece of wood it has no life so here they are back in chapter 18 verse 26 oh Baal, heal us psalms 115 says he can't but there was no voice psalms 115 now psalm that that psalm was written by david which i didn't check that was written way before this challenge nor any that answered. Psalms 115 says he couldn't answer. And they weren't looking for a voice. Elijah said, there's the offering. The God that answers, let fire come down. He, got, he didn't say talk. He didn't say speak. There's the offering. Don't put no spark there. The God that is the God, let it burn his, let him burn his own barbecue. If I could say that. There's the wood. There's the altar. They're not God, so I can say barbecue. But when I come up to Elijah and God, that's not a barbecue. That's an altar. So it would be a barbecue. And they, but there was no voice, nor was there any answer. They leaped upon the altar which they which was made. I'm gonna think about one of them music videos. They're just hopping around. They're going crazy. They're dancing. That's what they're doing. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Oh, Elijah, you're a bad boy. How dare you speak evil? It's in the Bible. Jesus did it. Paul did it. Peter did it. Elijah mocked him and said, cry aloud. For he is a God, small g. He is talking. Now, I know Isaiah probably knows Psalms 150. He knows the fact that, you know what, they're not going to say nothing. But he's mocking them. He's doing it is sarcasm. <laughs> Your God's talking to someone else. Cry aloud. He's deaf, remember? He can't hear. Maybe you got a hearing aid, God. He's pursuing. He's going far away. He can't get you. He's chasing something. He's on a run. He's on an errand. He can't answer you. Try again. Or he is in a journey. He's gone farther away. He's on a trip. He's on, maybe he's on a vacation. Maybe he's going down south, going north, north. Maybe he's going somewhere. And you know what? He's got a sign on whatever his heaven, whatever you want to call it. He's got a sign on the door, you know, gone, be back in a couple weeks. Or pre-adventure, he sleepeth. And he must be waking. That's kind of cruel. Your God. You need him right now. And he's put to sleep. He's Wake him up. Set, set his alarm clock. Now the living Bible. Also adds. If I may say. I don't know where they got this. Or is out sitting on the toilet. That's the Living Bible. Wow. CJB, Jewish Bible. I forgot what the C stands for now. He's on the potty. Those are two modern, and a few other modern Bibles had that. I think there was two potties and one toilet. Now, where you fit that in there, I don't know. But I just saw, I had to put the potty one there. It just made, that, that, that's. I had to put that in there. Verse 28. You with the modern Bible. Well, what revelation does that give me for pure English today? <laughs> and they cried aloud. You know, a lot of God's people have cried out loud. That's an imitation of God's people crying out loud. <laughs> crying out loud. That's the first thing you hear all the time. I grew up. Grew up. It's an imitation of preaching. They're trying to preach. To who? God, wake up! God! 
When I preach in the streets, I don't preach to God. I preach to the people. These people are preaching to their God. You're not answering. Cry aloud. The devils cried aloud when Jesus approached them. And cut themselves after the manner with knives. Ouch. Now this is an illustration. Now this is not the first place where knives show up. But knives show up in Joshua and it's used for circumcision. I just thought it was interesting. And lancets. That's the first and only time that word shows up. That's what a diabetic uses to poke his fingers. To get a little bit of blood so he can test his sugar. They're doing... They're, they are cutting themselves. They're making little holes in their body almost like tattooing. And that's where the Bible says in the law, I suppose that there are Jewish people here, they are making cuttings in the flesh. This is exactly what, what's going on. It would be the ritual for dead and worshiping fallen God. You would cut yourself, and one of the number one tattoos out there is death skull. That's exactly what they're doing. And I'm trying to get the word that's called in the church and over the Orient and all the island nations. Um, it's not coming to me now. Oh, penance. They will, in the island nations of the Pacific, they will go up and down on stairs of glass and have their knees ripped open. A monk will bang himself in his, in his shoulders and his back until he's bleeding. They will do all kinds of things. They will walk on fire. They will do everything. This is what's happening with Baal worship, not God worship. That if we draw our own blood out, an imitation of Christ God manifesting the flesh, drawing his blood out, if we draw our blood, Baal would be happy. There it is. So the office or the 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 doing of penance is long before this says 906 BC, greater date than any date I can come up with, 906 years before the birth of Christ. You are seeing people doing what they do in the island nations. You're seeing people do what they do in the Catholic Church. They have God, God, look at me. Here it is. You would do it another way to be nice today that you would get God's attention. What would that be? God, I'm not going to have no more chocolate for 40 days or 70 days. I'm not going to drink no alcohol for 40 days. But the day before that, I am going to have me a celebration. I am going to have a festival. And I'm trying to keep to I can't get the name of that one. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras will mark off the days before the fact. Get it all in right now because you got to deprive your body. And all that, that, you know, just before the celebration, I give up ch chocolate. I give up hard alcohol. I give up hard candy. I give up whatever I give up. For, this is it right here. It's just a cleaner version that it's not as bloody. But you are trying to do something to appease your God. This is by works. 906 years at least, thereabouts, good age, doing it long before ever Christ showed up. People are doing things for God to try to make them happy. And it's not God. Till blood gushed. That's the first time that word showed out. Gushed. Out. From them. They are hitting arteries. <laughs> they know exactly where to go to get that blood. Mark chapter 5. The time of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 5. I'm telling you. When God told those Jews, don't make no cuttings in the flesh and all that, that's exactly what, why he told them not to do it. The heathen are doing it, with, and it's tattoo forms. You can find island nations, you can find places in Africa, they will have imagery on their body, and it's for the dead. That's where it comes from. I, uh, Mark chapter 5. Verse 1, 31 AD. And there came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Gadarians. And when he, Jesus, was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs. Here's a guy who's in the dead. 
He's living in the graveyard. He's associated with death. And when we, I, I, listen, the, the, the bikers are the best people for the public ministry. But when we go to those biker events, there is death surrounded all by them. Skulls, uh, skeletons. As with Halloween. Death is surrounded by Halloween. And that's association of Baal, what we're reading now, and about this maniac. He was in the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit, never devil, demon possession, who had his dwelling among the tombs. He's living right there. No man could bind him. No, not with chains. And there are serious drugs today that are on the illegal market that will make people like this. And listen, when you get involved in that drug, you are in the realm of Satan. The fact is, when I grew up as a child and my wife grew up as a child, the package stores were called spirit shops. John tells us to try the spirits. When you're getting involved in alcohol and drugs, you are in another realm. You are in the realm of Satan. Because that he had been often bound with fitters, like handcuffs kind of things, and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broke in pieces. No handcuffs could keep him. Neither could any man tame him. He's beast-like. You know someone who's called a beast? And always night and day he was in the mountains, up high. Go to the mountain, get your guru. I'm, I'm called the amazing fact is that Mount Everest, Everest, that the highest mountain ever, everybody ever wants to climb. There are dead bodies up there that have never been brought down, frozen dead, and they're used as markers on how to get to the tip, tip of that mountain. There is death on the highest mountain in this world. And people use them instead of the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. Isn't that interesting? And the feathers broke in pieces, neither could any man tame them. Always night and day it was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stone. There it is. Their devil possession is he's cutting himself. He's making himself bleed. That's what we see in, in uh, 1 Kings 18. There's no denying it. There are people worshiping devil. And with the worship of the devil, they are making themselves bleed. They're trying to please God with their blood. And you show the devil 900 and, I don't want to say, three years, 910 years, thereabouts, 20 years later, here's a guy still doing it. And he has nothing to do with God. And when you finish that story, when Jesus comes into his life and he gets cleaned up, man, he, he's dressed. He's respectable. He's sitting down and he wants to follow Jesus. What a change. So one of the things that would mark false religion is blood. You know somebody who has the thing of drinking blood. And they don't say it's a type of blood. It is the blood. That's a mark of Satanism. Baal is Satan just with another name gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday, that's the first time that word shows up, midday. So all churches close their services at noon. Quinky dinky was passed that the prophet, that, that they prophesied until the day of the, until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, 6 p.m. That there was neither voice, Psalms 115, nor any answer, Psalms 115, nor any that regarded, Psalms 115. It's already in the scriptures. And Elijah said unto all the people, <laughs> here he comes, his turn, come near unto me. And they all come, and all the people came near unto him. <laughs> you need to see this group, they just step over, okay, what? And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. There is right there an altar of God. It's been broken down. 
And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob. 12. 12 tribes. Unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And what he's doing, he said, listen, he probably, this is Dan, this is Joseph, this is Judah, this is the people that God said will be my people, Benjamin, Naphtali, this is the people that God said. I guarantee he's doing something like that. You're reminded of And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital Jehovah. Here's Jehovah's altar. Baal's altar is over there. It's probably got flies now. Beelzebub. On a piece of meat that's been sitting for over six hours in the heat. Of the drought of no water. Beelzebub probably showed up in a fly. The Lord of the flies. He made a trench about the altar. Now you're probably wondering. Here's the altar, okay? Here's the altar to God. Blah, 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 blah. We done it with bam, blah, blah. Why is he building a trench? Why is he making a mole around this altar? That's something new. That don't happen. And they're watching. He said, come here, guys. Watch me. All right, here's the 12 stones. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, okay? Now he's building a hole around it. And they're like, that's new. As great as it would contain two measures of seed. I don't know what two measures of seed is. And he put the wood in order. Now he lays out the wood. This is the second bullet. Do you know another time that a second bullet was offered to God? Gideon. Remember his father gave the first one over to a foreign god? Here's twice the second bullet is offering. Judges 6.25. And cut the bullock in pieces. All right? You know, he's got to do what he's got to be. I don't think Elijah is of Levi. I think he said it was Ephraim, something like that. Or Gad. One of the, the tribes that was on the other side of the river. He's entering to the office of the priesthood, kind of. Because he's not going to put the fire in. God is. So in order to cut that bullock in pieces, he's got to know what Leviticus says. He's got to do it right. If he don't do it right, God said in Leviticus, I'm not going to accept it. You don't read the see you you gotta read the whole you gotta study the whole Bible. He had to do what God told them to do in Leviticus. And laid him on the wood. That's the bullock, not him. Him is the bullock. And said. Full, uh, fill four barrels. That's the only time barrel shows up with water. Elijah, we're coming at the end of three and a half years of rain. Of no rain, I mean. We began this chapter with Ahab and Obadiah. Man, we got to go get some grass somewhere. Now, there are waters, fountains of water, and there are still brooks. Water is very precious. Fill four barrels of water. And pour it on the burnt sacrifice. All right. Elijah's freak out. He's gone. He's, what is he doing? Find that in Leviticus. Now, Leviticus says that the brazen altar was there for the priest to watch. You were to wash the offerings. But you were not to bring any water and pour it on the altar. The fire would go out. So he's built a trench that's not in the law. Not nowhere in the scriptures. And he's dumping water on the sacrifice. You can't find that anywhere in the scriptures. And these people are probably. <laughs> oh the water. They're probably on restriction of water. It hasn't rained for three. We're coming, we're coming at the end of three and a half years. And he said, fill four barrels. And I don't think, I don't know if it's our barrels. But four waters, four barrels with water. And pour it on the burnt sacrifice. And on the wood. No trickery. There is no way Eli Elijah is going to say, I put a spark or a hot coal there. He is defying what the magic tricks are. Don't you tell me there was a spark. Don't you tell me there was a live coal. I dumped water on that sacrifice. I'm not as trickery as those people are. 
He defied the magic, in other words. And to make sure there is no trickery, he said, do it a second time. Eight barrels of water on the sacrifice on the altar. This is why he built that trench. And they did it the second. Look how they're obedient. No one's fighting him. And said, do it the third time. Twelve barrels of water. And they did it the, th the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Now, why is it? There is no possibility you can say that there was a live coal, a spark, or a little flame in that thing. It has been, if there was, it has been extinguished. The trick is that I have been taught by my instructors that they would put a coal, a live coal, a spark, or something with fire in that bottom of the altar. And within time, that thing would flame up. Elijah is completely going against that aspect by watering that sacrifice so that trickery cannot happen. How can you say there's Christian magic? The only purpose Elijah's doing this is to prove there is no trickery here. That's why he did it. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, 6 p.m. So they've been at it 12 hours since it started. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And since the time they really, you know, started breaking down, started going home at noon, it's been six hours. The even in the morning and the evening sacrifice was 6 a.m. the morning, 6 p.m. the evening. That's where the lamb was offered in the morning and the evening. Notice how Elijah is in Israel, north. They are defiled God. They are not doing what God, they have their own religion. And yet Elijah is following the laws and the rules of God in Jerusalem with the Levites. I'm going to wait to the time they offer that lamb at 6 p.m. At the moment that this would happen, 6 p.m., that lamb would be offered for the, for the nightly offering. Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord Jehovah, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, that I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things at thy word. John eleven forty two. John eleven forty two. This is one of many places. I thought this was interesting. It's at a graveyard. And he's talking about the resurrection. John eleven forty two. The family's upset. Lazarus is dead. Everybody's crying. Jesus is wept. He's going to resurrect Lazarus. And he says in verse 42. He's about to do a miracle. Elijah's about to do a miracle. 1142 John. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Speaking to the Father. But because of the people which stand by. I said it. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. Look at the word. It's almost like the words of, of Jesus. He is praying with the people listening to him to tell the people that what's going to happen is of God. Now, he's not praying at the corner like Jesus don't pray in the corner. He's praying for the testimony. Is This is what God's going to do. As Jesus did at that graveyard with Lazarus. Father, I know you hear me, but I am praying because they will have testimony. And then, boom, up comes the grave. Lazarus. He says, I am thy servant, verse 36, that I have done all these things at thy word. That's almost what Jesus said. Hear me, O Lord. That's what the Baalites were saying. I mean, a Baalamite. Or a Baalite. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. 
Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. That's good, isn't it? God says, yep, it's me. Baal didn't do that. There's the, there's the raw carcass of meat still over there. And God, poof, we're not done. And the wood. So the animal, the calf, the calf, the bullet, it's gone. It's been devoured, the bones and all. The wood has been devoured. Okay. And the stones. All right. You, you can destroy rocks with fire. All right. I don't know what kind of rocks you use. And the dust. Well, I don't. I've never seen fire destroy dust. And we're not done. Now watch. And licked. That's the first time that word shows up. Licked. You think about someone licking a lollipop. And the Holy Spirit said lick. I didn't check the modern Bibles. I should have. I didn't. And the Holy Spirit uses words particular. that modern Bibles don't look like. Licked up the water that was in the trench. I cannot explain to you what that fire did to that water. But the Holy Spirit, by the inspiration, said, like a tongue licking up water, the fire drank the water. Now, right there, okay, it devoured the meat. Yep, fire will do that. It devoured the wood. Yep, fire will do that. The stone. Yep, fire can destroy stone. If it's hot enough and, and long enough. And the dust. Okay, I don't know. Uh -uh. But a fire that licked up water? That'd be like fire department going to a house fire and they got their hoses out there and the fire that more. Give me I'm enjoying it. Give me more. That don't happen. That's right. That fire is drinking up that water with everybody what now that definitely go there's no trickery here. He definitely did not have a coal. Because if he did have a coal, that fire is supernatural. And who requires a sign? The Jews. What was supernatural about John 11? All right. All right. A body came out of the grave. Okay. It's happened before, hasn't it? Doesn't the Bible say he was wound up? Didn't Jesus say unbind him? How on earth did he walk out of that grave? He couldn't walk out. He was all bound up. When they, when they bound Jesus up on his death row, they wound him up. The supernatural part of John chapter 11, that, that dead body that was, that was mummified with, the, stitch, with, the, with the, the bandages or what they called it. The miracle was the resurrection and Lazarus had to float out. The resurrection, I mean, the, the, the miracle here, okay, the fire devoured, yeah. It was drinking water. That's impossible. And can you imagine what the people would be doing? And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. They knew exactly. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Now, is that correct? Well, I mean, the Lord and the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Did I quote that correct? No, it says the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Almost all the modern Bibles remove both those thus. So in the context of chapter 18 with Baal and God, God is not the God. The modern Bibles leave open. Well, if you want Baal, go ahead and take him. Modern Bibles, as it read, the Lord, I read it. He is God. The Lord, He is God. What's wrong with those modern Bibles? The King James, the Lord, Jehovah. He is the God. He won. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the God. He won. That God, Jesus, God, the Father, Jehovah, they did something, man, I can't believe. Can you imagine a little boy if he was there? He goes home, Mommy, Mommy, you know what happened today? What? 
We seen fire come out of the sky and it drank water. I'd smack him across the bed. Go in your room for lying. Like that little boy with the fishies. Mom, I gave Jesus, this guy Jesus, two of my fishies. And look, I got a whole bat. I get, you're lying. It's unbelievable. And that's the realm of God. Unbelievable. So throw your modern Bibles out in the garbage. I want a Bible that says, the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon. And he slew them. And he, he killed them. Deuteronomy 18.20. And we'll close here. We'll, I know we got a short passage left, but I, I didn't want to go on. I wanted to stop right there. The Lord is God. Deuteronomy 18.20. It's in the law. Elijah knew the law. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. There it is. You got 450 prophets, or 400, I forget which the numbers are for that one. They're speaking in the name of Baal. They have been proven that their God is wrong. Jehovah, God, the Lord God of Israel, Isaac, and Jacob. That God is right. You kill those guys. Now, I know we got freedom of religion in this country, but we don't have the revivals that this country wants. Because God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ is being put into a closet. Slowly by slowly, year by year. And the religions that have come out of this country, the Mormonism comes out of America. Jehovah Witnesses comes out of America. Mary Becker Eddy has come out of America. Charismaticism came out of America. Check out. Congregationalism came out of Massachusetts. That's the fruit of religious works of America, and God will not bless it. He says it's dead. Kill him. You can't have a revival in, in this country when you tell, when you have the Lord, he is God, the God, and the Lord is the God. You can't have that in America when you have other gods in the courtroom, in the schoolroom, in the government. You, you can't. 